and talk about exactly what's happening here. Ricardo, thanks for joining us on RT International. You're in the city at the moment. What's being reported about the explosions? Well, first of all, um, you know, um, uh, the issue is very serious. Um, we have said, and a few days ago, on the same interview uh, before uh, the, when the last uh, terror uh, risk was uh, captured in Belgium in Molenbeek. Do not provoke the situation. Do not take credit prior. Keep the information quiet. What we are seeing here is an evolving event and there must be a kind of inquiry. There must be a kind of uh, accountability. Why? Because we have to understand that terrorist organizations are specialized. They're not candy stores. We don't deal with people selling things in candies in the store. We're dealing with expert terrorism. And we have warned before that this type of events will proceed because credit has been taken on one or the other side. Mm. Well, Ricardo, we're, we're, we're monitoring the situation here, and as you and I are talking, we've been showing some pictures, or uh, some of the latest photos, I should say, being posted on Twitter. As I'm sure you're familiar, uh, Mr. Boretsky, last week, one of the key suspected organizers of the Paris attacks, uh, Salah Abdeslam, was arrested in Brussels in the right. Molenbeek uh, area. Do, do you think today's event could in some way be linked to this uh, Mr. Salah Abdeslam? The terrorist organizations over the last two years have shown a trend of retaliation. If you look back at all the attacks that happened over the last two years within the European Union, we would notice there was some form of retaliation within a certain period and space of time. I think what is important here to understand that um, the terrorist organizations are well organized, they are extremely dangerous, and it's time that the public realize that there is an error uh, and, and a, a risk factor involved in the public domain. What we have to really look at here is, well, not only why did this happen, what has happened, but where will this lead? Where is this going to go in the future? And if there's not serious attention paid, I am very convinced at this moment we see a dark future. Do you think, uh, do you, do you think the local police there in Brussels and, and across Belgium perhaps have underestimated the true threat? Well. Um, you know, it's difficult to speculate. As you know, we advise us to different federal departments across Europe. But at the same time, I must say that there needs to be more attention paid to what we are saying. There needs to be paid attention that this is a form of guerrilla warfare they're not used to. And they have to learn and understand that systematically they have to be trained in order to assess the risk and be able to mitigate the risk. Uh, Ricardo, we understand the U.S. Embassy in Brussels is awaiting confirmation that the blast occurred near the American Airlines desk. Uh, we understand, I think as you mentioned earlier, Belgian prosecutors confirming blast, not mentioning terror so far. I'd imagine all the local channels where you are are covering this with wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Do we know what the people at the airport who have evacuated now are, are supposed to do? Because we understand they're just now milling around the outskirts of the main terminal. Well, there's been a complete lockdown of the airport, not only the airport, the nearby regions. I believe that, if it's correct, that even part of the train stations were in the vicinity because the, it's connected directly to central Brussels, has been uh, blocked off. Um, the, the, the importance here is that they, they look at the people. Um, there will be a huge impact. We foresee from our side there will be a major psychological impact on this event. Why? Because they haven't expected the event, even though they should have known that this type of event will occur if they continue in allowing information in public domain. The second point is, is that uh, we have a responsibility to the people. Um, all of Europe has a total responsibility to civilians, and we would like to see them to make special care and take special care about the civilian situation at this moment because there's also always a risk of something I haven't seen yet. Now, Mr. Boretsky, as you and I are talking here, we continue to get the latest reports here at RT International during this breaking news. Uh, we understand that one of the firefighters at the Brussels International Airport is saying 17 people killed so far. Uh, according to a witness, uh, there was shooting in the departure area first, then they were shouting in Arabic, followed by this alleged 
double explosion. Obviously, Brussels has been at one, part of the forefront with the whole migrant crisis and the refugee crisis in Europe. Uh, how might today's blast, if indeed confirmed as terrorism, how might that affect uh, the local migrant sentiment where you are? I think it's going to be a huge effect. Um, uh, we have also, in the past, from ESA's point of view, warned that the cultural clashes will be in the heart of the beginning of these type of future problems. We have to realize that there's a major risk not extended with just the event, but external of the event, whereby different parties of cultural and ethnic backgrounds uh, could take this in a personal way. Um, how they're going to deal with it, we would like to see. We would like to see how they're going to be in the structure to be able to keep proper accountability in this particular management. Do, do you think, but because you're there in the city itself, is, is there a general feeling of insecurity among the average city resident there? Do people feel safe? Absolutely. I think um, there's been a sent growing sentiment over the last year and a half. We've noticed it uh, in different regions where people in general doesn't go out. They don't want to go shopping. Um, you know, they, they do their sales or buys online. Um, people is generally not as safe uh, conscious as they used to be. Um, we have particularly noticed this after the close down last year of the, the uh, train stations across uh, Brussels. Um, and, you know, if, if, if we give the message of a police state, it's natural that people will not feel safe. We've got to give the message of that we are in control. We've got to give a message that the people can trust the officials and that the people can trust the law enforcement and the military services. The danger here is that we will see a major step up in uh, military services on public domain which is not really solving the problem. You know, we, we, we have said before, they need more people on the ground. They need more people invisible. They need more covert operations. Um, and, and the danger that we have seen here is there's clearly a situation when information is prematurely in public domain, it could lead to further problems. And we have said this is a dangerous situation. We have seen this in other countries and we are confident that this will escalate. Mr. Beretsky, uh, let's just give our viewers here a quick reminder of the breaking news story here on RT International. I really appreciate you staying with us here on the channel for now. An alleged uh, double explosion at the main Brussels International Airport. We're bringing up the map right now as Mr. Beretsky stays with us here for the program for now. Um, a double explosion approximately 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, upwards of, we understand, 17 people killed. That's according to at least one firefighter. Witnesses saying there was shooting in the departure area, then there was shouting in Arabic, and then there were these blood we're showing pictures of people ultimately evacuating or should we say fleeing the airport a destruction in the back of the picture on the facade of the building with smoke rising from it let's bring uh, mr. Boretsky back in here Ricardo thanks for your patience on this breaking news story Welcome. is there if indeed it is confirmed as terrorism and it does certainly seem to allude to such is there a solution to what's happened I think it's very very naive if they know there was an explosion they know this was a situation and to assume is not a terror attack. We have to realize, and it's important that the officials realize from the experts and the people who give them advice that a terror is not to be assumed. It's something that's in fact and something that they have to pay attention and they have to contain the information as soon as possible. We urge the officials to contain the information because if the information is not totally contained prior, there could be major ramifications. And Brussels is a center of Europe when it comes to the importance of the decision-making place. So Brussels security is fundamentally important for the survival of the European Union. All right, Ricardo Baretsky, the president of the European Center for Information Policy and Security, thank you so much for your insight here on RT International today. Thank you. Thank you.